Hello everyone, this is the third video that I'm putting out for um, determining the cost of equity for a firm. The first model was on the capital asset pricing model. The second model was on the Fama French three-factor model. And this model is on the pastor standby model. Uh, the difference between the Fama French three-factor model and the pastor standby model is that the pastor standby model has the three factors from Fama French three-factor model but then includes a liquidity factor. Um, I, just as a review, liquidity risk is the risk that uh, the asset or the investment won't sell at its market value um, fairly quickly. In other words, if, if you needed to get some cash and sell your asset or your investment, the liquidity risk is the risk that you would go out into the marketplace and try to sell it not be able to get its true value. You'd have to take a large discount in order to sell it quickly. Most publicly traded firms don't have this issue, especially firms on the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ. They tend to be fairly heavily traded. Uh, there are some lightly traded firms and that's where really the liquidity risk comes in. Um, that's where you may not have a willing buyer whenever you go out to sell your your stock and so you may have to drop the price. So what we're going to do is go ahead and, and I'm going to show you how to do the multivariate regression for this. If you I've already done the Fama French three factor model. This is easy. We just add another factor. Um, the free information out online that I have available to me um, doesn't go through 2012 like it did for the Fama French three factor model. If you look at the data uh, that you have for the Fama French three factor model, these are the, the numbers and the dates uh, for. Uh, the risk premiums for those factors. I went out, um, and you can look it up online, Pastor Stanbach model. Um, Chicago Booth School of Business provides the liquidity risk premium over time. However, they only go through uh, the end of 2011 with the data they have freely available right now. Supposedly later on this year they're going to update through the end of 2012. So the results that I have um, and that 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 you'll get whenever you calculate this may or may not be that accurate, depending on how stable you think the cost of capital is for your firm. Excuse me, the cost of equities for your firm. So, but I'm going to go ahead and and calculate it and and show you how it works. Um, the liquidity factor is added onto the other ones and we just run the multivariate regression using that just like we did before. Now I'm going to have to download different dates than we did before for the for Cracker Barrel in my case because like I said it only goes through the liquidity factor only goes through the end of 2011. So where I start my data is January of 2007 so this would actually be the return between uh, December 1st 2006 through January 1st, 2007. So we have five years of data. Again, we're going to create a regression uh, using this information. So I'm going to go out to Yahoo Finance. And I'm going to provide you that spreadsheet that I just put out, that I just showed you that already has the liquidity factor in there. I want you to go out and just so you're familiar with how to do it and how to how to get the information for the Fama French three factor model. But the liquidity one is a little more difficult. There's different columns and like I said, uh, we only have what's available freely online here at UWL. Uh, if you go to work for a firm, an uh, investment analyst firm or, or a firm where you're going to be doing investment analyst, you'll likely have access to the the premium, the paid accounts, where you would be able to download that factor. So I'm going to go out to Cracker Barrel's uh, website. Down a little bit today, but that's not too bad. Historical prices. So my end date will be December 1st, 2011, because that's where my data ends. And my start date then will be December 1st, 2006. All right. I'm going to go to Get Prices. And just like I did before, I'll download these to the spreadsheet. So 
So again, I'm interested in the adjusted close. And just to be clear, the reason why we use the adjusted close is that it adjusts for dividend payments. So you're going to see the dividend yield return uh, in this adjusted close price. And also it adjusts for stock splits and, and stock dividends as well. So it gives us an accurate reflection of the total return for the firm, even though we don't see the dividends in there. Um, which is what we want. We want to, uh, to have the total return month to month return for the firm. So again, what I put in is the natural log of the most recent uh, price divided by the natural log, or excuse me, divided by the pre prior uh, month price for Cracker Barrel. Their price was the same on December 1st as it was on November 1st. Evidently, Thanksgiving didn't do much for them. Um, so I'm, I'm going to delete this last one because it's just there's nothing to, to have there. Um, I'll highlight the returns for the 60 month period. Right click, press copy. Then I'm going to go out here to that spreadsheet and again I'll put these online for you. And make sure to click, press pay, uh, pay special. You want to put the values in. Just like we did last time, I'm, I'm not really doing anything different here. Um, we're, we, we regress the excess returns over the risk-free rate. And so, what I just did was subtract the Cracker Barrel return for that month excuse me, subtract the risk-free rate for that month from the Cracker Barrel return for that month. And now I'm going to perform my multivari multivariate regression. Just like last time, I go into Data Analysis, select Regression, press OK. My Y input range will be the cr Cracker Barrel excess returns. And my X input range is going to include all of my risk factors the market risk factor, the size risk factor, the value risk factor, and the liquidity risk factor. And again, note that I am selecting the, the headings. Um, the reason why I do that is so that we can see those headings in the output. Make sure to put label, select labels, or it gets really bad and goofy and you're going to get weird results. I'm going to go ahead and take out the plots. Uh, what I noticed last time is that they, they just plot the individual var variables, and that's not very informative for us. You can leave them in. It doesn't change anything, but I didn't want to make the, the page look any messier. So these are our outcomes. The R square, or the explanatory power of the uh, model, is 0.27. So this model explains 27% um, of the variation in the stock price of Cracker Barrel, or excuse me, the variation in the return of Cracker Barrel from month to month. Um, we see that our beta, what we would cons usually consider our beta for the market, is 0.82. Uh, the other, the other coefficients are fairly low. And you can also see I didn't mention this last time. The p-value. This is uh, the probability value. In other words, the effect that the excuse me, the the likelihood that this factor is is statistically significant uh, for the market risk factor, it's highly significant. So what that means to us is that it really does matter, that it has an effect on the stock price. Um, the, the last three, however, are statistically insignificant. In other words, they're above a 0.05, or in some cases a 0.1, um, depending what your threshold is. These are actually very high. So the idea is that statistically, they probably don't matter. But we can go ahead and include uh, those betas in our calculation, or those uh, regression coefficients in our calculation. So just like last time, um, we have the risk-free rate we have the coefficient which we said in class was A um, that would be the coefficient on the market which is 0.8177 we have the market risk uh, premium. Your book 
for this as it is 0.055 um, when we talked about it in class I said I was going to use 0.045 I'm going to be consistent with that but don't feel like you're held to that um, if you feel like the market risk premium or the equity risk premium should be higher you should use what you feel is what you feel is correct but just be prepared to justify it even if you use mine or excuse me not mine but the one that I'm using you should be prepared to justify why you're using that one so I'm using 0 0.045 um, for that premium the second one B uh, that we mentioned before would be the regression coefficient for the size variable and in this case it's 0.23223 what this means is that it's not very uh, Cracker Barrel is not very sensitive to size risk the size risk premium which is in your textbook and what I used uh, for the last time for the last one was 0.02 the regression coefficient for the value for value risk is 0.294 and the value risk premium again from your textbook was 0.043 and then the last one our new one I'm gonna say it's D kind of falls in order there this is the regression coefficient for the liquidity risk premium you can see that it's very low you know what we talked about before in class is that one is the average stock um, for this firm it's it's not very sensitive to liquidity risk um, firms that that are thinly traded and and again it's calculated the risk premium is calculated similarly to the other uh, risk premiums where we take a portfolio of thinly traded stocks and with a, a portfolio of highly traded stocks there's a lot of uh, movement in buying and selling of stocks and then we we find a risk premium between the two um, it's 0 0.1335338 three, and then according to your textbook the liquidity risk premium is four percent so I'll go out again and look up the risk-free rate save a little time again hopefully you just watched the Fama French video it's we're gonna go ahead and use 2.86 even though you know the data we're using is a little a little bit older it hasn't changed much in the last several, uh, few years So 0 0.0286, and now I'll just complete the uh, calculation. And this gives us a required rate of return for Cracker Barrel of 8.80%. 8.80%. Um, I hope this works out okay for you. Uh, like I said, I'll put the data set that I just used out online so you don't have to look up those liquidity factors. And just understand why we put it out there that this is kind of a a risk that most firms have but isn't really included in that market risk factor um, we know that it's kind of a separate risk just the sizes and and the value risk and I'll talk more about that in class on Monday um, have a good weekend if you watch this before the weekend and a good Valentine's Day it's about time for me to go home um, and see my wife and kids so have a good weekend let me know if you have any questions about this and I'll see you on Monday